But without further ado, allow me please to introduce Stuart Swerlow. Stuart is a gifted hyperspace intuitive. Swerlow moves his consciousness beyond time and space to determine your foundational mind pattern upon which all your life experiences are based on. His great uncle, Yakov Sverlov, was the first president of the Soviet Union. And of course, many of you know Stuart from him blowing the whistle on the Montauk Project. Another very brave whistleblower who has seen it all, literally, ladies and gentlemen, Stuart Sverlov. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, it's been a long day. I got up at 4 a.m. to get here, and of course, my flight was delayed. Every time I go to a conference, there is some kind of a sabotage, whether it's a blizzard or, or a flight cancellation, but I made, it, I, I made it anyway. So, I have a lot of interesting information to give you today. Uh, information that I have not done outside of my immediate group of people from my website. Um, some of it might be a little bit uh, outrageous to you, but as you know, I am not politically correct. <laughs> and I never will be. And I also have a very strange sense of humor, so you will have to bear with me on that as well. And as uh, was mentioned, yes, uh, my family history is a bit uh, sorted. My uh, great uncle Yakov, yes, he was the uh, first president of the Soviet Union. Uh, his brother, Benjamin uh, Sverdlov, uh, started mind control and programming in the Soviet Union in the 1930s. And that is why, because of that background, I was taken here in the United States to be used in the Montauk Project. Uh, my grandmother uh, was a Soviet spy, so you're getting the, the, the image, yes, uh, of especially why my family here in the United States was very much monitored by the U.S. government um, and why I was taken into service in uh, Montauk Point. Um, another interesting fact, which I never really talk about too much because it is politically incorrect, is that my uh, cousin, First cousin once removed, Alexei Sverdlov, who was the son of uh, Yakov, actually started KGB. And so this also led me wherever I go to be followed by them, uh, especially in Russia, Eastern Europe, and so forth. And so, but I do get a lot of good information from them. So, <laughs> and I will, and they have uh, many times asked me to come back uh, to Russia. Uh, and, uh, you know, maybe I will someday, but I don't think I'll do it right, right now. But you see up there on the screen the uh, word Kuiper Belt, and I am not sure if many of you are familiar with that term. If you look at this picture in the image, and hopefully you can see it clearly enough, you will see that the Kuiper Belt is basically a region which surrounds our solar system and that is the reason why uh, the planet Pluto, uh, several years ago, was reclassified to either a Kuiper Belt object or a planetoid. Now, if you look at this map, you will also see that Neptune is at the edge of the Kuiper Belt. So why wasn't Neptune reclassified as such an object? You may recall, those of you who read my website for several years, that back in 19, well, 2007, 8, et cetera, 9, NASA was reporting objects appearing in this Kuiper Belt region uh, that looked uh, strange to them. And almost every week, there would be two or three different objects that would be appearing. When it became very suspicious and people were questioning the news and asking why, and what are these objects? That is when they reclassified Pluto as a cover to say, well, these objects were always there, we just didn't know they were there. But I will tell you that the Kuiper Belt uh, right now is amassing a very large fleet of objects uh, that are not necessarily from our space time. And when I say that, you may recall also NASA reporting for the last couple of years 
large objects emerging from our sun and then moving out towards what is the Kuiper belt. And so we know from close-up observation and digital analysis that these objects that came from the sun were artificial. In some cases, you can even see windows. You can even see equipment on these vehicles. And they are huge. Some of them are almost uh, the size of our planet. If you learn about uh, interdimensional science and about galactic work, you will know that a black hole in one universe is a star in another universe and vice versa. This is how energy is exchanged between uh, universes and energy is balanced throughout creation. And uh, you can learn more about this in my simultaneous existence uh, uh, work. So these objects that are coming in or passing out through the sun, these are actually going through a, a vortex, if you will, a black hole in one universe coming in through our sun here. Now, there's something else you should know about the sun, because people think, well, is the sun so hot, wouldn't that burn up the objects? And the answer to that is the sun is actually not hot, and I know that, that sounds looney toony to you, but it's cold fusion. Think about something. I'm sure many of you have uh, gone in an airplane, yes? And it could be very hot on the surface of the ground, and then you take off, and if you look at the monitor, uh, you can see, especially on international flights, they do this. As soon as you go into the atmosphere, it's way below zero, 50, 60, 70 below zero. Now think about it. You're going up, literally, closer to the sun. Why does it get colder? Shouldn't it get hot? And if the sun is hot, shouldn't space interstellar space and the solar system space shouldn't be warm out in space, but yet it's hundreds of degrees below zero. Why? Because it is not hot. The sun is not hot. It's just light. And what creates the heat on the Earth is our atmosphere and the light refracting through the atmosphere and then reflecting off the surface of the planet, which is why it's only warm at the surface. And as higher you go, it gets colder. So keep that in mind. And what you learn about Mars, about Venus, all these planets, it's not true. Mars has an atmosphere, it did have oceans, there are plant life growing there, animal life growing there, and little by little, you will be informed of this, although maybe not in the proper manner. But let me go on, because I have a lot to tell you today, and um, I will, tomorrow, at the, at the question session, you can ask me whatever you like. Hopefully, I'll work this correctly, and I did not. No. It's not working. No. It's not working. Yeah, yeah. So beyond the Kuiper belt is the Oort cloud. And this is another region uh, of space that you can see from this, uh, this uh, diagram here that extends even further out from our solar system. What we have learned, oh, I should say what the government has learned from certain alien groups, and I will get to that in a bit, uh, is that our solar system is not configured the way we uh, have been taught, that there are actually 13 planets in our extended solar system that goes into the Kuiper belt and the Oort cloud. And we have learned that sometimes planets, or what they call rogue planets, which are not associated with a star, can actually have its own uh, ecosystem, atmosphere, and light source without the need of a star or to be close to a star. And this also exists out there in the Oort cloud. And these are some of what they call trans-Neptunian objects. Um, 
There's many, many of them, most classified as uh, planetoids. I'll just go quickly through this. Um, yeah, this is what I wanted to show you. Um, the wormholes and vortices, and there's a difference. People misuse the term. There's a difference between a wormhole and the vortex. A wormhole is a shortcut between point A and B in the same physical environment or space. A vortex is a shortcut between point A and B between two different dimensions or parallel universes. So when we discuss about wormholes and vortices, this is what I mean, and by the way, the plural of vortex is not vortexes, it's vortices. Now, you will be interested to know that there is a, a vortex between our sun and the earth, as you can see from this uh, diagram here, so that technically, if you aim a spaceship at a certain point in space towards the sun, and you enter into this magnetic uh, field vortex, you will go into another time space. And that is how many vehicles travel here from great distances. Science will tell you now that it's impossible for alien beings from other universes or galaxies or even other solar systems to come here because of the vast distances. But that's because they don't know about the technology or at least they don't want you to know about the technology. I'm going to tell you a secret we learned from Montauk Point. Every point in time and space has a unique frequency or set of coordinates. It's unique in all of existence. If you take an object or person, place, or thing, and you vibrate it to a specific frequency of where you want to go and it matches, there will be instantaneous connection. No time passes because no two points can have the same frequency. And if you match a frequency, instantly it goes to that point. That is how time travel is created and how vast distances between galaxies is traversed in a matter of seconds. I talked to you about the emerging objects from the sun and by the way, here's an experiment. Uh, um, it's not, I don't know if you can see it clearly. It doesn't look clear uh, from, he, from me here. But uh, the gold star tetrahedron, uh, if you can see it up there on the screen, if you want to view what is going on in the Kuiper Belt, visualize that gold star tetrahedron at your pineal gland at the center of your head. In fact, make the uh, star tetrahedron become the pineal gland, and you will be able to see or view into the Kuiper belt. And that's uh, an experiment that you can try for yourself. Now, let's talk about aliens. And, and I really wanted to call this lecture the alien agenda because I'm going to tell you, and those of you who know my work are maybe familiar with this, but there will be, in my opinion, before the end of this year, a staged alien invasion. This is not a new agenda. This actually was created by the Germans in World War II. Hitler decided that in order to scare all the other countries into acquiescing to his uh, dominion, that he would create a staged alien invasion so that all of the world would think that we are being attacked from outside, and then they would unite because only the Germans would have the weapons to defend against these attackers. And so when Werner von Braun was brought to the United States under Project Paperclip after World War II, he continued this experiment. And uh, NASA was created as a cover for the real space projects that were being uh, used by United States and Soviet Union. And uh, you may recall that the Soviet Union was actually the first country to put an object in outer space, and then the US followed. However, I will also tell you uh, that uh, subsequent to that and behind the scenes, 
the United States and the Soviet Union had a joint uh, space project where they actually used alien technology to go to the moon and to the planet Mars. And to this day, there are joint American-Russian bases on the moon and on Mars. And I will also tell you, and some of you know this already, the moon is an artificial object. It is not natural. It was driven into space here uh, eons ago by the Draco reptilians uh, to colonize the Earth. And uh, I will tell you that the technology that you see uh, with the space projects, uh, lunar landings, Mars landings, all of these, is for show. The actual uh, technology is hundreds, if not thousands, of years ahead of what is shown to the public. And I will also tell you that the Germans in World War II had extensive uh, help and technology given to them by beings from the star system of Aldebaran. And the Aldebaran beings claimed that they were responsible after the destruction of Atlantis uh, to genetically create uh, what became known as the Teutonic races and even the Scandinavian races um, and give them the information to become very technological. The Germans documented this. And if any of you can read German, I do recommend a book called Flugscheiben uh, über Schwabenland, which is about the German uh, interaction with this group and how they helped them to create the uh, Vrilkraft and uh, to actually establish a base on the dark side of the moon, which is still there. And I will also tell you that there is a fourth Reich. And it's interesting to me that recently on CNN, I was watching the news, and they called ISIS the Fourth Reich. Now, obviously, this is kind of ridiculous because the Reich refers to uh, the Teutonic uh, race, and ISIS is far from that. And by the way, I'm sure all of you realize by now that ISIS is an is a, is a intelligence operation uh, in order to create a new crusades uh, to uh, establish a new world religion and on and on. Um, but uh, the Germans, the Fourth Reich, the real Fourth Reich, are located on this planet in Antarctica, uh, in the base uh, the, in, in, in uh, Neuschwabenland, uh, which is in uh, the Queen Maud area of Antarctica. And you can look that up on a map. Uh, they are in league. This Fourth Reich is in league with the beings in the Kuiper Belt. The objective, from my perspective, of this collective in the Kuiper Belt is to remove the Illuminati. And the reason they want to remove the Illuminati is not because of love, light, and peace and to help mankind. And I'm going to try to explain to you, I know some of you may not want to listen or believe, but there are no alien races here that are trying to help you. Each of them has an agenda. The benevolent races don't interfere. They simply observe and see what happens. But you should know that in this galaxy and beyond, the Earth is the um, Iraq or Syria of the galaxy. And so there are those who wish to liberate us since we did such a fine job in Iraq, and they're so free and happy now, <laughs> that maybe that these Kuiper Belt beings want to do the same for us. But let me tell you, it's because they're concerned about what we are doing here on this planet. As you know, there are certain alien groups who have given technology to particular governments who have an agenda of globalization and to create a new galactic empire with the Earth as its uh, capital. And uh, contrary to what you may have been uh, taught in the so-called New Age, which, by the way, the New Age was created by the US government in 1965, New Age says that the uh, Illuminati want to uh, uh, kill most of the Earth's population and reduce to 500 million. You've heard this one, yes? It's not true. Listen, the Illuminati did not spend I don't know how many gazillions of dollars 
and how many centuries or thousands of years and all this time and effort to create 7.5 billion slaves to then destroy them. That would make no sense. So what the intention is as this galactic empire is uh, developed to relocate huge amounts of the population from this planet to new colonies elsewhere to expand the empire. That's the point, see? And that's why they have, uh, you must have heard of the Mars One project where they're asking for volunteers to go one way to Mars, you know. That's to get you used to the idea of leaving the Earth and starting life over again elsewhere. But this will never happen because Mars is already colonized and if they ever got there, they would be a big surprise for them. The advanced force. Let me explain. There are, let's, let's look at the, 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 the numbers. We have approximately over 100 billion stars in this galaxy, and there are approximately over 100 billion galaxies in the universe. So you can do the math how many stars there are. Then, if even one-tenth of one percent of that uh, stars has intelligent life, that's still so many hundreds of millions of civilizations. It's not, you can't even comprehend. Then times that by infinite universes, both physical and non-physical, and you can imagine that we are not alone. And they can travel the way I described earlier. But the government has classified aliens into four basic categories. Insectoid is one of them. The gray aliens are another, second. Humanoid is a third, and the reptoid is the fourth. Now, there are others, yes, but these four categories are the ones that are generally accepted by most world governments as what is interacting with the world. But uh, something to know about. In the Kuiper Belt, there is also a, a hierarchy of control. And the advance force in the Kuiper Belt is insectoid because these have hive mind and these do create action under jurisdiction of the mind control, which is normal to them. And they're also um, very aggressive so that uh, they are the most, uh, uh, the best type of alien being to uh, use as an invasion force. And you notice what I'm saying, invasion force. Now I mentioned earlier a staged alien invasion, which my opinion will happen this year because they're already giving you information on CNN and BBC and Fox News. They're telling you, oh, we're going to see alien life in your lifetime, and there are 400 million Earth-like planets in this galaxy, and they're telling you information. They're giving you information uh, to prepare you for the staged alien invasion, which will use Blue Beam Project, uh, which, you know, will create holographic images in the ionosphere uh, so that uh, you will think the Earth is being invaded by UFOs, etc. They will have laser beam weapons from satellites which will bombard the Earth and you will think it's from spaceships, but it's coming from your government. Now, Blue Beam, Blue Beam is, uh, is an old technology. It was first tested in 1962 uh, in the coast of uh, Havana Harbor in Cuba because uh, a U.S. submarine uh, was testing this off the coast of Cuba and projected an image of the Blessed Virgin Mary over Havana Harbor because this was to disrupt the communist uh, atheistic government and make people believe that uh, it was wrong and they should overthrow the government. So imagine 1962 U.S. had the capability to create such an image. Now, what is it, 50-some-odd uh, years later, you can just imagine what the technology has advanced into. They can create now holographic images that can be picked up on radar, that create sound, that you can actually feel. And that is what you can expect, uh, I think, in the next six months. Um, The Mantids, this has become a rather popular group in the last couple of years. 
Um, however, uh, these beings claim to be from um, alternate version of Earth. They claim the Earth is their planet. Well, so do many of the other civilizations. But they are the ones you see here depicted, uh, this one here with the robe, these are hybrids. These are a genetic blend between the mantid race and humanoid race to create a more a humanistic looking creature. Whereas the ones I describe in my uh, Blue Blood book and in my Montauk Alien Connection book look more like what you see here at the bottom right of the screen. They're very insectoid. Uh, they are at least two meters high. Uh, most of them are either green or white color. And they ha emit a very high sounding chirping noise which can become quite uh, irritating. Very much like my ex-wife. I told you about my humor, you have to... <laughs> Hopefully you'll never see the video of this. This is just another version of, um, of the uh, insect. Now, yeah, these are other types of beings in the Kuiper Belt. Many have reported lion-esque beam, uh, beings, uh, cat-like beings, very many kinds of different animalistic type of beings that are there. Um, and again, they all have an agenda of um, changing the political system of the Earth. Now, I want to go back to what I said to you earlier about the staged alien invasion and then the uh, formation of the uh, New World Government, uh, uh, also uh, New World Religion, etc. But uh, the Kuiper Belt beings, those who are there, they are going to wait till that's all finished. And then there will be a real invasion. And the real invasion will remove the political system of this planet. Well, but wait. <laughs> a couple of years ago, I was in Latvia, and uh, I asked uh, somebody there, I said, what was better for you, the German occupation or Soviet occupation? <laughs> and the woman said to me, that's like asking, would you rather have a heart attack or a stroke? <laughs> because the end result is the same, yes? So, yes, the Kuiper Belt uh, will remove Illuminati if they don't leave beforehand, but there's another, it's just another control system. Maybe a little more benevolent, but the perspective that I see and what I have been told is that since the Fourth Reich is in league with the beings in the Kuiper Belt, they will give the Earth to them through the Fourth Reich as in a control system. So that's something also uh, to be aware of. And uh, I will tell you, and you may have read this in my work, 1938 to 1944, the Germans built the paradise for the Führer in Antarctica. And there are many tunnel systems that go from South Africa and South America and lead into Antarctica to what they call Base 211 or New Berlin. And just, was it last week, they discovered in the jungles of South America Nazi bases. Did you read about that? And where did you read about it first? In my Blue Blood book because I described the series of German bases that were built before the war, from the late 1920s through the 30s, throughout the Andean range all the way to South America and in South Africa. You know, I was in uh, a few year, a couple of years ago, I was in Namibia, and uh, it's completely German. It's in Southwest Africa, but I thought I was in Bavaria. And they are waiting, and they have told me they are waiting for the Germans to come back. When I did my lecture in uh, Cape Town, uh, an Africana woman came up to me, and she said, you remind me of our prophets. And I didn't know who those prophets were. And she said, 
our prophets have told us that when things get really bad for white people in South Africa, then the Germans will come up through a hole in the Kalahari Desert and save us. And this is that they believe it. And that's why they're staying and waiting there. So something's going on. And when I was in Antarctica a few years ago, I visited uh, several um, uh, military bases. And there was a plaque on the British base that said, built to monitor the enemy. And so I asked, who is the enemy? Are there terrorist penguins, perhaps? <laughs> or, or dangerous walruses with bad intentions? But there's no explanation given. So it's built to monitor. And then Project High Jump, 1946 to 1947, was the end of the war. British and American and even Canadian forces went to Antarctica with weapons and Air Force. And you know what? They lost, but against who? 55 Americans died in that post-World War II attack. This was Neuschwabenland. This was the Fourth Reich. And they have weapons and vehicles that can fly into space that were designed and given to them by those beings from Aldebaran. And this is a significant force, people, because I know from, from working in South Africa and South America that there are huge German contingents waiting for this to happen. They are in Chile, Argentina, Brazil, Uruguay, South Africa, Namibia, they're all waiting. So this is not uh, supposition, this is a fact. Uh, these are just different type of humanoid type, and when I say humanoid, that means they look kind of human but maybe not exactly. Now I will tell you that there are alien beings on this planet that look just like you. You could be sitting next to one and you don't know they're not from here. That's how close they are. Again, I'm not going to mention my ex-wife, but <laughs> I had some in, you know, intuition about that. And they have an agenda as well. Remember, if you know about Galactic history, you know that all human races originated in the star system Lyra before it was attacked by the Draco Empire. So no matter where these humanoids come from, eons ago they had common ancestry in Lyra. So we have to keep that in mind. So that's why they consider this planet to be under their jurisdiction, if you will. Long time ago, maybe 25, 30 years ago, and uh, US government and Soviet government had extensive contact with various alien beings. The, uh, the uh, president asked one of these beings about the Earth's fate. And the alien being said, not to worry, the Earth will survive, the Earth will be here, but you may not be. That was the answer. Apparently, there is a network of over 17,000 worlds that extend from this galaxy into the Andromeda galaxy and was claimed to be controlled by non-physical beings from alternate reality. And that this planet, Earth, fell into their territory, which is why they felt uh, they had every right to do whatever they do here. And also according to them, human beings are an artificial race, which is considered to be dangerous and volatile and explosive. There are beings who wish to annihilate human beings because we are dangerous. We are considered the uh, ISIS of the uh, galaxy. You know, must be eliminated. And so this is something to consider when you think of who is here and who is coming here. In 1997, no, let me backtrack, 1979, the US Air Force issued a booklet to their uh, special forces 
naming and showing images of 70, 70 different alien species that were visiting the Earth, all considered to be hostile and to fire upon sight. In 1997, that number was raised to 117. But even so, that's a minute compared to the number of possible beings out there. There are also amphibious aliens. Uh, there are many unknown species of aliens, and I talked to you about this. Uh, look who's in the top uh, middle, Angela. You know, if you watch my, go on my website, I sometimes put an image of her next to the face of Adolf Hitler. If you put a little mustache on her, it's the same face. And you know, there are many stories that she is actually the daughter of Hitler, whose sperm and the ovum of Eva Braun was uh, frozen and uh, created by Fourth Reich uh, for, to create Angela. And you can see uh, here in, the, uh, in this panel here, from 1938 to 1939, Deutsche Antarktische Expedition, which was the formation of uh, New Schwabenland and uh, New Berlin. Yes, uh, Japanese princess, Princess Kaoru Nakamaru, who uh, is a friend of mine, actually. Uh, she is a very brave lady, um, and I, again, goes into a, another whole form of history because uh, she is the granddaughter of the Emperor Meiji, um, who um, uh, was the original or was the legitimate uh, royal family of Japan, and then something happened at World War II that uh, changed it. It's a whole story. Uh, but uh, she admits to uh, speaking to these alien beings and even flying in space with them. Um, and uh, she is very interested in revealing the true Japanese history, which uh, actually goes back to uh, ancient Israel. Yes, that's another lecture. <laughs> Staged alien invasion, I just talked to you about that. Uh, there's that uh, wonderful pope uh, there. Uh, that was Ratzinger, a uh, perfect name, in my opinion. And if you put a picture of him next to the evil emperor from Star Wars, you really cannot tell the difference between the two. And, of course, uh, this uh, real alien invasion. Uh, remember a couple of years ago, um, they said, uh, what was the scientist that said, uh, Hawking, that uh, we should be careful about aliens because they are not nice and they could even eat us for, as food. So uh, there's a clue there. Blue Beam Project. I talked to you about this, and on the bottom right, you can see the image of uh, a spiral that appeared over northern Norway a couple of uh, winters ago. And this was a um, revelation of the Blue Beam Project as transmitted from satellites in orbit. And you can see on the top uh, right there how that technology is accomplished uh, through cameras and lenses um, and actually using three different beams focused on the same point, which create a multi-dimensional image that looks very real. And you can even make them move. And you can even uh, create uh, religious figures uh, in the sky that will actually speak to you in your mind using mind transfer technology. Because every word and every language has a particular frequency. So if you can translate each word from every language into a frequency and then transmit that, transmit that frequency to uh, your brain, you will hear uh, commands in your own language that can usually take the sound of your own voice so that you think it's coming from you or it can be changed to make it sound like the voice of a religious figure, political figure, etc. When uh, the U.S. Uh, captured, I shouldn't say captured, but uh, when they shot down a certain alien craft, 
and some of the occupants were alive. These, many of these beings have no verbal language. It's only mind transfer. And so when the interrogators would sit with them and interrogate them, they would hear the answer in their mind in their own voice. So it was as if they were answering themselves. So it gets very complicated. And you will notice I use the word alien, not extraterrestrial. And I know I've mentioned this many times in many lectures, but for those who have not heard, there is a legal difference in the United States law between alien and extraterrestrial. By law, an alien is a physical being from this physical universe who is not from this planet. An extraterrestrial can be a borderline physical or non-physical being who may not necessarily be from this universe. So, by law, U.S. law, it's illegal for U.S. citizen to have contact with an extraterrestrial. It does not say you cannot have contact with an alien. The reason is alien contact can be monitored physically. Extraterrestrial cannot. So it's illegal for you to communicate with them or contact. By interest on the same page of law, it's also illegal for U.S. citizen to have unsupervised contact with dolphins. <laughs> they may tell you something that they don't want you to know. And this is just the network of the uh, satellites out in space. Uh, you have heard of the EMP weapon, yes? Uh, where they're scaring you into believing that some rogue nation or terrorist group will explode a nuclear weapon over the United States and, and completely eliminate electrical current forever. And that's not going to happen. Uh, first of all, if anyone had such a weapon, it would have been used a long time ago. Second, by the way, those uh, stories of... Uh, terrorists, and I, I say so-called terrorists, because all these terrorists are created by government, uh, the, the, that have um, suitcase atomic weapons. Let me tell you something. I have many extensive contacts with physicists and, and such people. They said there's no such thing. You cannot put nuclear material weapon in a suitcase like this. It's not possible. So this is this another scare tactic to make you acquiesce to certain rules and regulations. Yes, uh, here's the global map, but you should know that there are openings at the North Pole and the South Pole. The opening at the uh, North Pole is approximately 1,300 miles wide. The South Pole opening is approximately 900 miles wide, but covered in mostly ice, so not visible. If you look at a picture of the Earth from space, you will see it's not round, but has flattened top and bottom. And that's where the depression starts to go in to the inside of the Earth. I recently saw an old video of Admiral Byrd giving an interview. I believe it was in, from early 1950s on television, NBC, and he said that Americans don't know that at the South Pole is a huge undiscovered nation that we have no idea what, it, what is there. And that's because he saw it, and it was the Schwabenland. It was the German uh, colony in there. Ah, I know I'm going to many different topics, but these are things you need to know. CERN, or the Hadron Collider, it is not for the purpose of discovering the uh, God, the so-called God particle, but rather it is uh, to create a collapse of alternate universes into this one where the Illuminati have already gained control. So they are tapping in through those uh, uh, vortices that I mentioned to you earlier by knowing the frequencies of those alternate realities and merging them into this one. Now, here's the good news. 
Good news is that those beings in the Kuiper Belt are sabotaging this. And that is why the CERN has shut down more times than it started up. Every time they start it up, there's a problem. It's sabotaged because the beings don't want them to do this. So uh, many of you, uh, many of my clients have reported to me dreams where they see themselves in another reality or a different life that uh, is nothing like the one they have now. Or they see images uh, of possible events that are going on. And this is a result of the uh, residue of the CERN or Hadron Collider. By the way, did you know that the Vatican has a, uh, an office in CERN? Uh, yes, and underneath CERN, you can see here the, uh, the range of the collider, and there are tunnels. I, I knew a nurse who works at CERN in, near Geneva, and she told me that there are tunnels deep underneath that no one is allowed to go in. But she knows and has been told they go all the way to France, into Italy, under the lake, um, and uh, no one knows what's under there. But occasionally, she will get a patient who has come from this tunnel, one of the tunnels, with injuries that she has never seen before in her life. And when she asks what happened to them, they refuse to tell her. So there's something going on deep underneath CERN which maybe is bringing in uh, beings from alternate realities that may be not so nice. Now, besides the Vatican having a, um, an office at CERN, they also have an observatory in uh, Arizona called Lucifer. You know this, yes? Yes, why would the Vatican have an observatory called Lucifer? Very interesting, yes? Well, I'll explain to you. I also, in my many travels and connections, met a woman who worked for the Pope in the Vatican. This was Ratzinger, Pope. And she said he was a very evil man, very mean and very nasty, and that she was told that Catholicism is for the public, that they themselves in the Vatican do not believe this that history of uh, the Christ figure was very different than what they have told you, and that they have removed many passages from the Old and New Testament in order to cover up the truth. And of course, that's a, again a whole nother lecture, but will result in the formation of New World Religion, which will include ritual and sacrifice and abuse as being common. You may not know that in 2010, on New Year's Eve, BBC4 had a show at midnight of a Catholic Chinese person eating a dead baby in the name of Christ. And this was on television. This is the type of uh, ritual that will become commonplace in the New World religion. And uh, there are other, uh, look what's in front of CERN, the god, the, the deity of Shiva, the destroyer. What are they going to destroy? They are going to destroy your civilization. Which may not be such a bad thing, but has to be done in the right way. <laughs> and this is just uh, scientific information. Fermi Labs is the sister Collider to uh, Hadron Collider. Hadron Collider is in Geneva. Fermilab Collider is outside of Chicago. And it's very interesting that uh, ever since they have turned on uh, energy at the Fermilab, O'Hare Airport in Chicago reports very frequently phantom jets. And so incoming planes are suddenly diverted to avoid collision with the planes that are not physically there, but appear on radar. So perhaps they are opening up uh, the alternate realities uh, in this area as well. By the way, they are planning to open a third collider in Japan, which I think is quite uh, ridiculous given the uh, seismic and tectonic situation in Japan, uh, but I'm working with several people in Japan to prevent uh, the destruction of that country, 
because the 13 Illuminati families are seeking to destroy the 14th Illuminati family, which is the Japanese royal family. Reason being because they're not European based, the other 13 are. And there's more to that again, but uh, actually I believe that might be in my true world history book, uh, which just came out a few months ago. Yes, so we just uh, go through this. Uh, these are just the scientific slides. Now, all of these people that you see here, Snowden and uh, Assange and Manning, who's no longer a man, now he's womaning. <laughs> these are, let's say, saboteurs of the Illuminati, yes? Uh, my opinion is that these people had Kuiper Belt programming. Yes, the Kuiper Belt has programmed people on this planet to sabotage the Illuminati. And the ones you see here are uh, the ones who are uh, responsible for at least some of it. The Romanovs, yes. Unfortunately, my great uncle Yaakov ordered their assassination. And uh, in Russia, I was asked, uh, I had to go to the cathedral in St. Petersburg to apologize to the Romanovs on behalf of my family. And I did so. And um, <laughs> then I did a seminar in Yekaterinburg, which is where the Romanovs were assassinated. And there again, I had found out from KGB that my great uncle assassinated or murdered over a million uh, Soviet people. And so I apologize again on behalf of my family, and their reaction was, oh, forget about it. <laughs> and they asked me to run for president of Russia. I'm not joking with you. My point with all this is, if you look at the Russian flag, which, by the way, is also red, white, and blue. Since 2012, uh, when, I, when I was back in, in Russia in 2012, I noticed that on the flag was this Romanov emblem right over the top of the stripes of red, white, and blue. Now, this is quite interesting because this is a statement that the Illuminati Romanov family have returned and have taken control again of Russia and uh, actually seek to become uh, the head of Illuminati now. This is why, and I was told by KGB, this is why S the Soviet Union is returning. There is a new Soviet Union. It really already exists. And this is why they are pulling in Ukraine and Belarus and Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, and they want the rest of it back as well. And I will also tell you that uh, Russia considers Finland to be a province, not a country. And uh, when I did, I don't know if any of you saw the uh, live television show I did in Helsinki a few couple of years ago, when the minister asked me on live television to make a prediction for Finland, and I said, well, I said, Soviet Union is coming back. And she gasped, and she says, that's why we joined the EU, to protect ourselves. I said, well, you didn't do a good job, because Finland has only four and a half million people, yeah? And I walk in Helsinki and other places, and all I hear is Russian, 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 not, not Finnish. So I said, how come so many Russian people here? And they said, because we let them settle here. I said, oh, do the Russians let the Finnish go to Russia? No. So you're letting the Russians come into Finland and settle here. How much longer will it be until four and a half million Finns become the minority, and then there's a majority Russian and no more Finland? It's a brilliant idea, right? As far as Ukraine, do any of you speak Russian? In, in, Rus in Russian? Ukraina means borderland. So to Russia, Ukraina is just a border with Europe. It is not, that's why Putin said it is not a separate state. He doesn't consider it a state 
because historically it was simply the border of Russia empire. So this, you have, Americans don't understand history. Americans are not taught true world history. That's why I wrote my books. Because you have a limited view on what really happened and who went where and who controls what. But if you knew the truth about what goes on in Asia and Europe and other places, it would be a different perspective to you. You see? Just like you don't know your own history that America was colonized by Phoenicians and Minoans and Egyptians 4,000 years ago. Columbus never set foot in North America. He was in the Caribbean. He never set foot. You know what they call Columbus Day in Russia? They call it Indian Massacre Day. Because you know what he did? Besides uh, spreading disease all over the Caribbean, he killed the men and raped and kidnapped the women and children and brought them as slaves. That's why there's no more Amer uh, Taino Indians or Caribbean no more, because he killed them. And you celebrate in October a special day for him. Yes, we talked about the reality, but I want you to know about the frequency bandwidths. Think of existence as a radio. And as you turn the dial to a different frequency, there's another station, a completely different one. And you turn just a little bit more as another station. That's existence. Multiple, infinite realities, each in different frequency. All you have to do is tune into that frequency and you are there. That's how it works. And there is equipment that can do it. And your mind can also do this. I'm going to have to go quickly because they're going to get the hook, and that will be it. So this is why I do my work with the Oversoul, which is your higher self, the higher connection to the God mind. And you can see from this uh, grid there that think of that Oversoul as the liaison or connection to the God mind, yes? And all those lines coming down are different life streams or soul personalities. And they intersect with the horizontal lines. Those are realities where a soul personality intersects with a reality is you, is a lifetime for you. And so all of those points that you see, I only did a few there, those are your alternate selves, your from parallel universes. They're all part of your master intelligence. When the government learned this from the Germans and they created the mind control, they based the alter personalities on your real alter personalities. That's how they are able to program you to different compartments. And you can see the mirrors reflect each other. They're all reflected. Uh, yes, uh, I'm just going to briefly mention there is a group called the Ohalo Council, uh, which exists in the Kuiper Belt. Um, they claim to have settled on the earth thousands of years ago in ancient Israel. And isn't it interesting that about six months ago, the Israeli archaeologist uncovered a settlement uh, near the bottom of the Sea of Galilee, and they said, this is a place called Ohalo. You cannot make this up, people. This is for real. You know about the wingmakers, yes? You don't. Where have you been, people? <laughs> this was popular in the 1990s. A cave was discovered in New Mexico with uh, technology, with writing, and with information that said a group of people 600 years in the future had come back to warn you all that your government had been occupied and controlled by an alien force that was evil and destructive. And that was in the late 90s. Then the site was shut down. Then 10 years later, a site comes back and it's all commercial music and art and government control, la, 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 and nothing real. 
So the original wing makers, if any of you have that information from 15, 20 years ago, that's more accurate. The information now is from government. Yes, uh, we can, the, this is all about opening up visualizations uh, for your um, uh, mind pattern. I have a visualization called Green Spiral Staircase, which is a form of mental time travel. And uh, this will uh, help you to go and see events and images that you have blocked in your mind. Uh, I also, I also uh, talk about frequencies like uh, wolf frequency, bear frequency, lion frequency, all these frequencies which help you to access certain information uh, in your energy field and in your mind. Now, you should also be aware, and this is a caution, that not only can you access this information, but you must be careful because the mind control always puts animal or insect alters in your programming matrix. So you may think you're communicating with a dolphin or a lion or some such thing, when in actuality it is a programming alter within your matrix. So this is why I encourage you to learn about deprogramming techniques and to do this daily. I have something to explain to you. Uh, maybe you've heard about it before. How many of you heard about uh, Shemata? Where, you people, I don't know what's going on with you. <laughs> You're supposed to know all these things. It's called Shemata. Shemata. L listen, listen. You know, in ancient times, the holy day was the seventh day, yes? They also had... The seventh year was called Shemitah year, and seven times seven was Jubilee. Well, this year we are in the both Shemitah and Jubilee year, which will begin on September 13th, 2015. You will look in history and learn that every Shemitah year had something quite disastrous happen. 2009-11, 2001 was Shemitah year. The financial crash in 2008 was Shemitah year. The financial crash in 1929 was a Shemitah year. So you can see the pattern. And yes, September 13th, 2015 is expected by many people who know there will be a global economic collapse total global economic collapse, September 13th, 2015. What has always precipitated these events are some kind of disaster, like 9-11, for example, yes? Um, stock market crash. And so, not to be concerned, because you know what? The world continued after all of it. But 2017, End of 2016 into 2017 is a jubilee year, which is a double whammy. All of these, uh, pre the precursors to this are four blood moons and two solar eclipses, which we had. That preceded every single Shemitah destruction and jubilee destruction. And so we have had it now. Just had a blood moon, the fourth one. And it's always during the Jewish holiday of Passover, which this year coincided with the Easter. And so, you should prepare by clearing up your head, doing your mental work, doing your release work, doing your deprogramming. I have lion frequency you should learn, dolphin frequency you should learn, there is even Kuiper Belt programming and deprogramming that you should learn. Uh, what you see here on the, on the left is a violet tetrahedron inside a violet octahedron. This is um, ultimate protection technique. If you put yourself or any person, place, or thing you want to protect in this uh, center of the tetrahedron and the octahedron, all in violet, then you will protect whatever is in there. Nothing will get through. And you put yourself in there, and the ELF and microwave bombardments will not affect you. So you must learn to do this on a daily basis. 
I won't have time to really talk about Atlantis and Hyperborea, um, but uh, these coexisted with Lemuria uh, many thousands of years ago, and these locations are now resurfacing. Inner Earth, I talked a little bit about the hollow Earth before, uh, so um, uh, you should study this. It's in my Blue Blood book. Uh, you can see the hollow Earth is a natural formation of how when a star emits molten material and it cools in space and creates a hollow planet be because of the centrifugal force of the spinning. Um, that's, uh, again, another lecture. Here are the notes uh, from uh, the Germans about Neuschwabenland and Antarctica. These are actual uh, Third Reich notes, which describe everything that I told you uh, today, um, even as far as the locations of their inner cities um, and what they refer to as uh, of, uh, the U-boat stations, uh, what they call Valkyrische Ocean, which is, um, you know, the Valkyries were the Viking gods. They considered themselves to be such. Asgard was the place of Odin. Um, and so there's a lot going on under your feet. Oh, I must also tell you that, um, yes, the climate is changing, but it's not global warming. It's actually ice age that's coming. Uh, Russian scientists uh, said that this would begin in 2014, and it did. And they said it would last up to 100,000 years. This was actually confirmed by U.S. naval scientists, but they would not reveal this to the public. So that is why it is snowing in Egypt and Dubai and Vietnam and the Philippines for the first time ever, because it's global cooling, not global warming. Let me look at this. You have a globe. You're heating up the globe. So it snows more. It gets colder. How can this happen? because it's not happening, because the opposite is happening. It's getting colder, and you, got, you should prepare for ice age. It's not going to happen overnight. You're not going to wake up in the glaciers in front of your window. It's going to be slow over time, but the winters will get colder and colder and last longer and longer and longer. I will tell you this. And I was also told by someone in military to expect a civil war in the United States in 2016 even specifically stated it would start in South Carolina. And isn't it interesting what happened recently in South Carolina with the shooting uh, that just uh, occurred there? Because uh, they are trying to create a racial war in the United States in order to break it up and assimilate it into the global empire. The United States is considered to be too powerful and too snobby, snotty, and so they will uh, break it up. Um, and so we will see if this actually happens. They've already done this in Europe. They've broken up Yugoslavia, Czechoslovakia. Other countries have broken up to pieces so that they could be independent under the EU, which is a dictatorship, by the way. People in the EU have to realize that the ones who make their law, they don't vote for them. Those people are appointed by others. And so it's a dictatorship. I spoke to you about the new crusades. This is also a religious war, racial war, religious war. Divide and conquer. That's the plan. And so we are seeing this happen, uh, in, especially in uh, the Europeans are very uh, upset with the Muslim population there. Um, we are seeing the Christians being destroyed in the Middle East. And so um, we also are, are seeing the first Jesuit pope, the first time a black pope, mean, meaning from the Jesuits, has now become the front man of the Christian religion. And yes, he is Petrus Romanus, the last pope before the installment of the New World religion. And people, they're going to get my hook soon. So uh, I'm just going to tell you that uh, there's a lot about the world that you don't know. 
Uh, next time, if I have a little more time, I will tell you. Um, but uh, they are bringing back extinct uh, creatures. They're bringing back ancient history. Um, and that's it. So I thank you very much.